Hello everyone, welcome to The Social Doctor and this is Dr. Ayushi. The Social Doctor is a platform for the doctors by the doctors, where we are on a mission to help each and every doctor with with us. He is here to tell us about the scope of becoming a tobacco de-addiction specialist. He has been working in this field since the last 15 years. How did he figure out this space? What are the kind of opportunities in this? How is he working with multiple international as well as national projects and everything about it? So let's welcome him on the platform and understand about the opportunities of becoming a tobacco treatment specialist. How can one become after his graduation and post-graduation, especially the dentist, because being in the same field, it will be really helpful for them as well as all the medical professionals and the paramedical professional can also become one. So welcome Dr. Rohan to the platform. It's really nice to have you here. Thank you so much. Yes. So, you know, let's understand. This is a very unique thing that you picked up of becoming a you know, tobacco treatment specialist, something that is very less known about. Why did you pick up this and how did you come up to this, you know, journey? Yeah, uh, just to give a brief uh, background of mine, uh, I'm a homeopathic doctor, but uh, uh, I was always interested in public health. And uh, I landed up doing an MBA in social entrepreneurship from one of the uh, good institutes in Mumbai, uh, NMIMS. And while doing that, uh, I uh, I was working in different hospitals, but then I realized if I'm doing this MBA, it is kind of a NGO management and you know getting a social enterprise, starting your own social enterprise. Social enterprise is basically uh, it's an enterprise, it's a profit or non-profit making company, but you deal with a social cause. When I was working in this, uh, when I was studying uh, this MBA, I realized that instead of working in hospital, I should work with some actual uh, NGOs who are doing real grassroots work. And being a doctor, I worked in a lot of uh, NGOs who are actually working in the health field. And then I, uh, eventually I uh, landed up on a project of tobacco de-addiction, uh, which was under the guidance of Dr. Sultan Pradhan, who is one of the senior uh, oncosurgeons in Mumbai. And... Uh, uh, he actually is a legendary uh, figure in uh, this tobacco, in uh, oral cancers. Uh, he's operated uh, a great politician, Sharad Pawar also. I mean, he's a big name already. But it was his um, uh, vision that if India today is number one in oral cancer, then we are seeing so many uh, increasing number of oral cancers, which we should do something about it. And it was his vision to get this tobacco cessation concept uh, and start some project. Fortunately, uh, I was the one uh, selected to implement this project. So they collaborated with uh, Dr. Nancy from Harvard. She is a, a medicine professor from Harvard, and she is one who started Tobacco Physician Clinic 50 years back in uh, MGS Boston. So she is one of the pioneer and one of the big name in tobacco de addiction field. So I was very fortunate to work on this project where I was actually. Uh, I took a training for a tobacco addiction and I was actually seeing patients day in, day out. So that is how I landed up in, into this. And once I started seeing patients and, you know, uh, understanding in detail about the field, I went through different literatures and different trainings. I'll talk about the trainings later. But then I realized that uh, this is something uh, which, which is something very important. And at the same time, there is a lot of ignorance, not only among the general public, but also among the medical fraternity. Uh, over a period of time, uh, we were also, uh, I was also part, part of a training uh, which was given for uh, people who uh, uh, want to get into tobacco, uh, you know, become tobacco counselors or become tobacco treatment specialists. So being a trainer, you need to be well read and uh, that is how you deepen your knowledge also. So I, that was another, uh, I was very fortunate to be a training a trainer for a course given by Global Bridges. It is the uh, Association of American Cancer Society and Mayo Clinic. So this uh, uh, this uh, also increased my knowledge and I was seeing patients at one side and I was also a trainer on the other side. So that is how I started my uh, this entire journey. Uh, to be uh, very honest, it was by accident, but I was always interested in public health and uh, so that is how I had actually done my MPO also. So with this passion and interest, I was doing uh, my work dedicatedly and that is how my confidence went on increasing. And that is how I uh, entered this tobacco de addiction field. And uh, now I'm among one of the few full-time tobacco treatment specialists. 
Uh, I'm not saying I'm on the only one, but yeah, of course, uh, there are a lot other people also doing it. But uh, I am doing it full time. So that is uh, something which I think uh, is unique about me. Hmm. Correct, correct. So now when you have been into this field and working full time into it, uh, so how do you see the scope in this? And you are also training people, you know, connecting with new people who want to get into this field. How do you think the scope is coming? Hello? Yes, yes. Uh, yes. I've lost in between. But yeah, the scope is, uh, I will just give you a little bit of uh, facts and figures about tobacco in India. I mean, there is this survey called as Global Adult Tobacco Survey, the GATS survey, which was first done in 2007 8 and it was repeated after 10 years in, after in 2016 17. So the, uh, the results what had come were really striking. Like in 2007 8, it, uh, it was like 47% of Indian adults are in some of the other kind of uh, tobacco uh, consumption. And when it was repeated, it was almost 43%. It was reduced to 43%. But having said that, uh, considering the population of India, uh, like 135 crores, and even if you consider 40% of adult population is consuming some of the other kind of tobacco product, it is something which is very alarming. And I was very fortunate uh, that I'm working with the best cancer doctors, I'm working with the best cancer hospitals in Mumbai, and I am working with closely with this uh, hospital. So I know how these cancers are increasing and how uh, there are the load on the cancer hospital is so much. And uh, as I said, we are number one in the oral cancers. 23% of all oral cancer body in the world is on India today. And we have uh, so many of oral cancers. Like 90% uh, of oral cancer, the reason is tobacco. 40% of all cancers, the reason is tobacco. So definitely there is a huge scope. And there is another study, interesting study, which speaks about 47% uh, of smoking and 46% of smokeless tobacco consumers want to quit. I mean, uh, among these this people who are consuming tobacco, there is almost 40 to 50% of people who want to quit. But they don't get proper advice, they don't get proper guidance, so they are not able to quit. So definitely there is a huge scope because there are, there are so many uh, tobacco products in India. There are so many people who are consuming it. And uh, that is uh, the other thing is there is no uh, cessation facility where they can easily uh, get help. So definitely there is a huge scope. Uh, and in fact, there is uh, much requirement. I mean, I always uh, uh, say my topic uh, for the session is urgent need of tobacco uh, de-addiction in India. As there is an urgent need of tobacco knee addiction, uh, there is an urgent need of tobacco a cessation uh, provider also. There is a, uh, I mean, there is a, what you can say, awareness campaign by WHO by uh, M Power thing. They have this uh, thing to fight the tobacco uh, entire industry. So they are, it covers a uh, lot of things. They talk about awareness. They talk about uh, how you can strengthen the laws. But there is one more important thing they talk about. Uh, you should also have a, provide cessation facilities for those who want to quit. So that is also one important thing, which most of the, uh, I mean, in fact, not only in India, even in the world around, there are uh, not much cessation facilities available. Uh, definitely in developed countries, there are facilities available. But if you consider entire world, uh, again, it is very less. And in India, it is more, uh, again, we don't have such facilities available. And there is a, another interesting study which says that if the healthcare uh, provider gives this counseling, the success rate increased by 30%. And if you give an intensive counseling, it, the success rate increases by 84%. So I appeal all the doctors, all the dentists today that uh, uh, this is there is a huge scope and uh, you can create a huge impact uh, by actually uh, implementing and uh, providing facility for people who, can, who want to quit. So now when you mention that you want all the dentists to understand about this, how, how can they actually implement in their practices and are there any courses for the same? Yeah. Uh, so first of all, uh, being a dentist is the biggest advantage. Uh, like uh, you can immediately make it out because I personally work very closely with dentists because uh, we do a lot of oral checkups and immediately find out, identify people who are into consumption and we give them counseling. So uh, dentists are the best people because every day in your daily practice also you see so many patients and out of that uh, 
at least fifty percent are into some or the other kind of addiction. So uh, you are you can pick up patients uh, immediately, and uh, you already are into practice. Secondly, uh, if you talk about courses, uh, as I said, dentists already are trained uh, for uh, oral examinations, and they can pick up the patients uh, immediately. And courses, uh, see, when you talk about sir. Hello. Doctor, yes. just missed a bit large topic. If you can repeat, sorry. Yeah. So when you talk about tobacco uh, addiction courses, see any course uh, to be valid or a training to be valid, it has to be a proper six months or a one year proper training. So uh, unfortunately, in India, we don't have any kind of such courses uh, for mm-hmm. tobacco addiction. It is it is never taught in our medical colleges. Also, I take uh, lectures in uh, different medical colleges, also in dental colleges. It is a part of your community dentistry, but it is not a full fledged uh, topic and course. And uh, having said that, there are courses available. I personally, I have done uh, different certificate courses, uh, which to add to my knowledge, uh, like uh, TMS Tata Memorial Hospital has a certificate course. Indian uh, Dental Association IDA has a unit called as uh, Tobacco Intervention Initiative (TII), and they also have some courses. Uh, PHFI also does uh, some courses for tobacco addiction, but these courses will just add on to your knowledge. There are some. Uh, courses online available also provided by uh, international organizations and they are free of cost also but as i said let me just add to your uh, knowledge about tobacco addiction uh, but uh, the most important thing is once you start implementing it this courses will talk uh, teach you what are the uh, globally or what are the uh, internationally standard uh, techniques or standard protocols to be followed uh, in uh, tobacco addiction and they will also talk to you about the pharmacotherapy and all to be introduced and they will also standardize the counseling like who has some set protocols like the five technique ask advice assess assist and arrange and also it's a proper standardized technique and uh, i personally i stick to it and uh, when i started practicing i religiously followed it and my success rate uh, went on becoming uh, improving so definitely there are courses available but as i said it, they are all certificate courses you can definitely uh, do it uh, and uh, but i feel uh, once you take that certificate it is important that you start practicing because every patient is going to teach you and that is how your confidence will also go on increasing hmm. yes okay so now when you understand when you told me that these are just certificate courses and you know of of all that you mentioned so this is actually this is one question with from dr Gehlop as well, and I, you know, I, I'm also inquisitive to understand what exactly then we do in this. Is there just counselling, or do we also, you know, treat patients? How how do you do it on an everyday basis? Yeah, so basically, uh, you have to treat patients, but uh, tobacco de addiction. The uniqueness of tobacco de addiction is it's a three kind of thing. It's like it's a physical addiction, psychological, and behavioural addiction. So uh, once you have to treat the patient, it in, involves a medicinal component, also a, a psychological and counselling component. But having said that, uh, it's not that uh, it's always uh, the patient who comes to you may not always be a physically dependent person. So medicines is just one part of it. And uh, if you consider the entire tobacco uh, de addiction treatment or uh, the therapy, it is eighty percent of counselling, fifteen uh, percent of NRTs, that is the nicotine replacement therapy. And five percent of antipsychotic or uh, only clean of bupropion or uh, the blockers what we use. But in a personal practice, uh, if you uh, have good enough knowledge of counseling and uh, the NRTs, that you can practice in a proper way. Uh, having said that, counseling people uh, may get confused or people may think how uh, we can do counseling. But this counseling is uh, uh, there are proper. Uh, what you can say protocols given by world health organization as i said about the 5 a techniques and all you can uh, implement this and when you are implementing this you are actually counseling the patient and uh, over a period of time as you see more patient your confidence level will go on increasing your counseling techniques also will go on increasing by counseling i mean you have to actually give more time to the patient sit with the patient understand the patient uh, and accordingly give him your strategy and as i said there the research studies have said that uh, if this counseling uh, is given by the healthcare provider uh, and the dentist definitely the success rate are much more because mm-hmm. patient are receptive when they listen to you and when you talk to them in your healthcare setup definitely the chances of the person to quit definitely uh, are much more mm. that's true so now because when you mentioned that you know 
you give medications as well and there are different who protocols to be followed for the counseling as well so all of these are being taught in the certification courses because this is not something that any medical or dental graduate will understand yes yes so uh, as i said uh, this uh, protocols are uh, available uh, in the trainings and uh, whatever training you select these are some standard protocols even if you go to the who you will get a huge literature about it and in the trainings they do talk about this they do talk about what are the different tobacco products they talk about uh, what is so unique about tobacco addiction as i said it is a physical psychological and behavioral addiction how can you determine whether a person is physically dependent by the phagosom scale there are five set of questions uh, which is this phagosom scale just to determine if the patient is physically dependent or not and accordingly then you can determine your strategy uh, for each uh, kind of addiction and apart from the uh, counseling as i said uh, there are nrts and uh, other uh, pharmacotherapy available uh, and yes all these things are covered in the uh, training and believe me it is not at all a rocket science it is absolutely very simple just you need to know the proper dosages of the uh, nicotine chewing gum or the nicotine patches that is also not difficult uh, once you undergo this training uh, you can start implementing it immediately okay okay so now you know for example if you know you know i'm a dentist i have gone through i took a training from one of the institutes that you mentioned or by the idea so how can what are the kind of opportunities that are available for a tobacco cessation specialist as you mentioned that you are working full time how can a person be engaged in this whether full time or part time what are the kind of opportunities available a very very important question uh, because that is what ultimately uh, we or we, we can not just work on passion but we also need to be supported but uh, as i said uh, there is a huge uh, need first of all see ultimately once you want to do something there should be need for it so need is definitely there secondly uh, there are uh, there is no competition today i mean uh, there the requirement is huge and we need more people for it a third thing uh, as you rightly said see there are no direct job opportunities that someone will directly give you and job that uh, because people are not aware people are not uh, into it so you have to create uh, your opportunities today i am working in a cancer hospital uh, in uh, in spite of being a homeopathic doctor and uh, in spite of uh, being a, not a mb or any onco specialist but still i am working in a uh, cancer hospital one of the best cancer hospitals in mumbai i am also working full time with the ngo which is working extensively for cancer prevention i work with india cancer society it's a very big and very old organization working exclusively for cancer prevention cancer awareness they do lot of uh, early detection screening camps they also give uh, money for treatments so i am part of this india cancer society today and i do lot of awareness activities and uh, help so there are lot of ngos there are lot of hospital uh, opportunities Uh, where you can actually uh, get and more than that even your personal practice if you keep a time uh, uh, allocated for tobacco addiction all the uh, neighboring doctors will start referring patient to you because uh, today other specialties don't know where to send the patients mm. so once you are into it uh, all the doc- because it's one of the biggest obstacle for cure for all the doctors all the specialties so uh, you need just to start it initiate it and you can work at different level as i said you can work in the clinics you can have a visit to a nearby hospital where you can just take rounds every day in the morning and see all the new admissions and uh, out of that definitely there would be people who are into tobacco addiction every day so that is how you can have your own uh, set of patients every day so you can either work with the uh, hospitals you can uh, work with a lot of non government organizations as, as i said ngos and uh, you can uh, start your own practice also hmm hmm so now when you mention that you know you have to create opportunities so as as you mentioned that as yes, you mentioned good. yes so as you mentioned that it is one of the most needed thing right now currently needed urgent need of a tobacco cessation specialist aren't there specialized posts for this for this place in ca- cancer hospitals and in you know various places haven't you discovered anything of that kind Yeah, there are like there is a preventive oncology department in uh, Tata Memorial Hospital, and uh, right. uh, 
there are hospitals which have uh, what you can say community health department or research departments and they do have so as i said definitely uh, there are uh, uh, post you cannot i don't think there are direct post but uh, cancer hospital definitely they are uh, having posts also but uh, i don't think you should also only restrict to cancer hospitals we should uh, treat people before they get into cancer rather than uh, going into cancer hospitals so uh, unfortunately uh, public health or preventive uh, medicine or community health is uh, not that much advanced in india that is a fact but again that also we can take another opportunity because today you see a lot of uh, doctors dentists going for mph and uh, doing uh, masters in public health and uh, that again the scope of mph is also increasing day by day so if you have this added advantage uh, i mean you can be a part of uh, who you can be part of uh, international uh, organizations also uh, this gat survey which was done uh, first time it was done by uh, international uh, this institute of population studies second when it was done repeated in uh, 2016 17 it was done by uh, tiss so again these were all uh, uh, dentists and other population who actually did uh, involved in designing this survey and implementing it so as i said the opportunities are huge uh, only thing is you have to be confident with your knowledge and you have to start practicing and even if uh, as i said even if you don't get any job you can start your own enterprise also and even then the scope is huge correct so now when you mention you know this is full time how can a dentist or any medical graduate work as a part time in this yeah you see if you are doing a night <laughs> if you are doing a 9 to 5 job uh, even you have evenings you can uh, implement uh, tobacco sedation you can see patients if a dentist is there see when a dentist is actually seeing patients he may not have that much time to spend with the patient for counseling we can keep afternoons or morning time whenever he is comfortable for this kind of a setup so uh, definitely uh, time i don't think is a problem only uh, your uh, interest in that field is uh, something which is required Uh, another thing is this doesn't require that much of uh, space or uh, you know examination table and everything you can have to sit uh, across and understand the patient and guide him accordingly and uh, regular follow up is important uh, what uh, everyone ask me ki what is the requirement to be a tobacco treatment specialist my answer always is a passionate person passion is something which is required uh, to uh, get into the field and uh, knowledge and all you can definitely gather and that will keep on uh, i mean you have to keep on updating yourself but a passionate person who is uh, you know he, he, who wants a uh, next person to quit tobacco at any cost there is a uh, interesting uh, research which says that on an average people take 3 to 11 attempts to quit so uh, you should be prepared that even in the 12th time you should be that much enthusiastic by again uh, understanding and counseling the person somewhere you should not get disheartened so that is the level of dedication and passion required but having said that uh, it doesn't take that much in personal practice but uh, it gives immense satisfaction so that is something which is beyond money can uh, i mean you can uh, buy but uh, as i said getting uh, paid is also equally important but uh, uh, you can start uh, at your uh, available time also and by appointment based you can always do it Yes, yes. Uh, yes. So, sorry, we lost you in the last. If you can, you know, repeat. We'll... Yeah, yeah. I was just saying that uh, because uh, this is something which you can do uh, with your appointment days also. So, with your available time, you can implement it. Yes. Okay, so today we have lot of technical glitches. Very sorry, you know. I'm sure it would have been a lot of problem to all our audience. Very sorry for this, but this is this is something we cannot help. Technology is something that is a boon, but at times a problem as well. So now, when you have been working since 15 years, what is the kind? And you mentioned about getting paid. How is the you know charges attached to it? How much can does a you know as you are working full time? How much? a person charges with that if working you know consulting patients part time or full time how does it work yeah i mean uh, the consultations are uh, same as your uh, 
I mean, general consultations, what you charge, and depending mm -hmm. upon the uh, whatever uh, area you practice and all, uh, mm -hmm. it's up yeah. to you. But uh, average, definitely, uh, uh, people yeah. are uh, ready to shell out that money because uh, I mean, that is something which they find very difficult, and uh, they also need some help and proper guidance. So. Uh, that is always there and uh, most of the time uh, people come to you with a lot of comorbidities and a uh, lot of uh, other, I think you lost it. Uh, most of the time people come to you with a lot of comorbidities and uh, patient references from uh, different consultants. So they are already made up their mind to quit also. You have to give a proper strategy. Your work will become more difficult if you do awareness and you, are, you have to get them to level to quit also. So that is uh, something a task, but again, uh, once they come to you, of course, uh, they are ready to pay also. So the consultation can anywhere between 500 to 1000 rupees uh, definitely uh, should be there. And uh, that is a, a standard uh, thing. So Dr. You know, Bhalop is again asking, in India, are people taking all of this seriously? Because in India, people are not much aware about the side effects of this addiction. See, uh, as I said, I've done my MBA. Uh, and uh, in MBA, they tell us one story where two people go to a country to sell shoes. Hmm. So when uh, the first salesman calls his company and tells, ki, uh, tells his boss that uh, there is no scope because no one is using shoes here. The second salesperson calls his boss and tells him that there is a huge scope because no one is wearing uh, shoes here. So it's up uh, attitude. Definitely uh, in India, uh, I mean, uh, people uh, don't want to quit or they want to quit. That is not a problem. But such facility is not available. That is a bigger problem. And as research suggests that uh, there are people who want to quit. I mean, there is a huge population who wants to quit, but they don't get proper guidance. So even if you target that population, as I said, people with comorbidities and people who have already uh, into, uh, I mean, referred to you by uh, other consultants. So they are already uh, a good uh, population. Uh, and there are uh, another population who on their own try to quit and they don't get, uh, I mean, they don't become successful, but if they get proper guidance, then definitely they would like to quit. So uh, uh, you have to educate people and all, at the same time, then treat patients. So yeah, it is, some part of your uh, uh, this profession can also go in educating people that there is something called as tobacco situation and if you need help, I am available and this is uh, how we can help you. So definitely it will involve uh, awareness part also to some extent. Hmm. Hmm. Correctly said. So now when you mentioned all this, so now when you... So is there a need in the tier two, tier three towns as well? Because this is tobacco is something which is there everywhere in India from rural to to the affluent classes. So do you think if somebody sitting in the tier two town can also, you know, try to implement this test? Yeah, so when you're talking about tier two, tier three cities, definitely I personally, I'm practicing in Mumbai, but I have, uh, I was fortunate to work in at different, uh, it's different cities and states of uh, India. I have visited Northeast, I have visited Gujarat, I have visited Rajasthan. So uh, definitely uh, there is a huge need. And as I said, there are there is no such facility available. So whether it is a tier two city or whether it is uh, a, uh, a city, uh, but definitely there are patients. And uh, in fact, the, uh, the tobacco addiction is beyond class, caste and states, borders and everything. There are different products at different states and each uh, state had its unique products and unique uh, whatever patients. So uh, definitely uh, it is a good thing uh, to do along with what you are doing and uh, you can eventually, uh, if uh, you find a good uh, opportunity, you can take it as full time also. Yes. Yes, yes. So we lost you. So you 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 told me that uh, it is something a good thing that people that we can do along with what we are.
I'm really sorry. It's it's getting you know the the technology technical glitches getting really hazy today. So yes. So now understanding about working at different places as well as consultations, it's it's really nice to know. So now also understanding what are the challenges with this. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Sorry, you know. Yeah. yeah. So challenges are definitely there as uh, uh, all of all of them don't want to quit, and uh, nicotine is one of the most addictive substances in the world. See, overall in NED addiction, forget about tobacco D addiction, the success rate is two percent. In the tobacco addiction, twenty percent is supposed to be something very good. So definitely there are challenging. There will be challenging cases. Uh, that is one challenge. Secondly, uh, establishing yourself and making people aware about that you are uh, into this field is another challenge because uh, again you have to uh, uh, spread your uh, whatever you are doing. Uh, only then people will know about it, and then uh, doctors will also refer patients to you. That is another challenge. How you can do it uh, today by because of social media and other electronic medium, you can uh, do it in a better promote yourself also in a better way. But as I said, initially, uh, in initial days of your uh, practice, you should uh, do a lot of awareness campaigns. Uh, it may it be in schools, colleges, or whatever uh, community organizations are there. So that uh, is another challenge. But once people know and people are get aware of it, then uh, over a period of time, you can focus on treatment only. But initially, yeah, it would uh, you will have to face certain challenges because. Uh, All of them are not aware that there is something called as tobacco solution, and there is help available. But to promote that, initially there are challenges to be faced, and also you will also face challenging cases. Also, as I said, uh, people may take three to eleven atoms before they actually quit, on an average. Yes. So yes, we understand this, and I I completely agree. Awareness is one of the major part of this whole thing. You know, getting making people aware and then treating them is one major part. So you know, Doctor Golap is again asking one thing, but as you mentioned that people do not take it seriously. We need to make aware people about all this. So after all of this, are people actually ready to pay you? You know, do you is it is it easy to to convert people into that zone? uh see uh, there is a uh, what you can say uh, there is a psychology uh, theory which talks about stages of mind so mm-hmm. it's called as pre contemplation contemplation preparation action and relapse so it's it's a psychological theory it's not uh, restricted to tobacco addiction so if, uh, if there is a fat person uh, if you tell the fat person that you need to reduce weight otherwise you will end up in problem but mm-hmm. a fat person will tell you okay i am i'm not fat i, I don't feel i am fat so there is nothing you can do about it so he's in a pre contemplation stage where uh, in the contemplation stage the fat person will start thinking that yeah if so many people are saying the doctor is saying i am fat i think i should do something about it he's not done anything but that is the contemplation stage what happens in the preparation stage he actually pays the gym money so that is a preparation stage he is not going to the gym but he has already paid the money that is a preparation stage and then the action stage that he starts going to the uh, gym that is the action stage can you hear me yeah so that is the action stage that he starts going to the gym that is the action stage and uh, he if he continues that is the maintenance stage but again he may stop going to the gym that is the relapse stage so same is this with the smokers or tobacco smokers that some tobacco smokers or smokers may feel they don't need to quit they are in the pre contemplation mode where they have not decided to quit then comes the contemplation stage where they may think they should quit they are not doing anything about it uh, i think you missed it hello yeah so i was talking about same thing with the smokers if they are in the pre contemplation stage they they will think they need not quit i mean they they are okay with their whatever they are doing that is a pre contemplation stage then comes a the contemplation where they think they should quit then the stage is where they actually give you a quit date and that is a preparation stage and the action stage they have already quit completely and then comes a the maintenance where they either stick to the abstinence or there will be a relapse where they again start doing it. so when a person comes to you he can be any one of these stages of mind 
as he can be any of the kind of addiction like physical psychological or behavioral he can also be any one of the stage of the mind you need to understand which stage the patient is and accordingly determine your strategy for a person who has not decided to quit like he is a pre contemplation stage you cannot give him a strategy to quit because he is not yet decided to so for him you can max you can do is you can tell him what are the risk of this tobacco and what are the benefits of quitting and you can tell him ki okay whenever you find want to quit we are there to help you that's it you cannot do much better than that but if a person who is thinking to quit you can definitely convince him ki how it is affecting you how it is relevant for you and uh, what if his confidence is uh, i mean low or he is not confident that he can quit you can understand what are the uh, road blocks or what are the hindrances he is feeling that he is not able to do it and you can give him a proper strategy so uh, uh, in the personal practice you won't get much people who are to pre contemplation stage because uh, even if they are in pre contemplation stage they won't say in front of you because uh they respect doctors and people uh, doctors advice so they will at least listen to you they do it or not do it is a different thing but as you rightly said uh, will people be uh, ready to quit and will people be ready to pay you see once they are ready to uh, quit then definitely uh, they will be ready to pay you but as i said if they are in pre contemplation stage and because their uh, family members are telling them to quit they come to you definitely they will be hesitant in doing the payment so but then this is the fact we have to face and uh, they would be people who are in pre contemplation stage and they would be people who are in uh, preparation or action stage so uh, depends upon uh, which people we are uh, getting or we are facing no correctly said and you know this is this is one major issue coming up with the country you know tobacco has always been in all stratas of india and i'm sure this is something if you know started working on and building awareness and if uh, one more point one more point i would like to add that with the current scenario i mean cancers and everything was definitely always there but with the current scenario of covid i mean health has gained a focus again and health has become a priority even for those people who used to take their health very lightly yes. because uh, as covid is targeting the lungs and directly your immunity so everything is around immunity and people yes. want to do all the things which will uh, build their immunity and avoid all those things uh, which would uh, you know uh, hamper their immunity but having said that because of the lifestyle changes like the work from home has become a norm people are spending a lot of time at home and that again is causing boredom and because of that boredom again people are getting into tobacco habit like in us actually the smoking rate had got down but again the smoking rates have gone up this is a fact so even in india uh, we have the same thing uh, that people uh, have uh, both the things they want immunity also but again because of boredom and stress and other things the habits have again raised up so uh, this is the best time you should uh, take it up and help more and more people correct correct that's that's so correctly said and you know it's it's more about that because there are so less tobacco cessation specialists currently in the country if any of the person picks it up and starts implementing it 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 actually makes you the person in your area and hence increases your chances of becoming you know becoming the one in your place as well as correctly says you know with increasing oral cancers it is it makes it makes sense law to the dentist because these are the first line people who come in contact with these kind of patients and hence absolutely building awareness and targeting them and ultimately if you intend to consult them is something that will be easier for the dentist so you know this is this is such a good thing that you know dr rohan you have mentioned us to, to us so anything that you want to say to people who who are uh, want to pick up this branch anything from your end you know for them okay uh, this is something uh, it is uh, my personal advice and it is more of a philosophy uh, it is a philosophical advice more than a, a, what you can say a professional advice uh, believe me being a doctor you are already uh, in a noble profession in uh, ahead of that you if you are doing something which is uh, practicing uh, something like uh, preventive medicine or uh, specifically for tobacco addiction you're not helping i think i lost you yeah so i was talking about it is uh, it is a noble profession and if you are into this practice of helping people quit you're not helping a person actually you are helping entire family 
because entire family has to pay a price if the person who is into this addiction gets into any problem god forbid it would be cancers or any other problems but entire family has to pay a price for it and working closely with cancer hospitals and i have seen patients closely and their relatives and how much they have to suffer so as a doctor uh, if you are uh, uh, getting an opportunity to help someone it is your moral responsibility also that you should help him and uh, believe me uh, there is something called as karma in our uh, mythology and i firmly believe in it and definitely this uh, good karma or whatever good work you are doing will help you in some or the other way this is my personal experience also so uh, whatever you are doing whenever you get an opportunity whether you want to take it as a profession or not please practice tobacco cessation so whether you are uh, into uh, whenever you get an opportunity uh, whether uh, you practice tobacco uh, addiction whether you want to take it as a profession or not but still do practice it help more and more people and save more and more families that is what uh, the personal message which i wanted to thank you so much so thank yes and and actually correctly said it's is something that helps the entire community not only and if that adds to and if you as a profession can help the community and help people it's it's the fantastic way you can do so thank you so much dr rohan for such an thank insightful you, discussion it's something that that you know people just don't know about and i also an dentist never knew about so after talking to you i thought this is a fantastic thing that needs to be covered and needs to be understood because tobacco is a major problem of oral cancers and many different problems with you know with our body with with respective to body and where with many things so thank you so much for covering this and thank you so much everyone for joining us and being patient with us in this session you know it was it was a bit difficult one yeah, but thank you so much for being with us and uh, obviously dr rohan for for explaining us about this amazing thing do their practices which they can implement along with their practices as well as add to their income as well as help the community in general do share it with your friends and colleagues as and also follow us on our youtube as well as instagram page so that you can find all our old videos which can also help with your career growth thank you so much everyone yeah. for being here with us today have have a good day tomorrow and a good night sleep today thank you so much dr rohan thank you thank you yeah all bye -bye. the best yeah bye bye everyone